Okay, so another example, um, maybe kind of pictorially. So on the left, uh, we have a, um, there's a bunch of decorations inside of there, but just think about the yellow uh, region in the plane bounded by three um, simple closed curves. So that's a surface with boundary. Um, it's a disc minus two open discs. And inside of there, there's this uh, graph um, built out of those three white arcs. So we'll call that uh, graph A. And uh, there's the inclusion of A into X. And then there's a retraction from X down to A. And so I've sort of indicated how that retraction goes um, inside of each complementary component of the, the white graph inside of that, um, that yellow surface with boundary. You just sort of uh, push that, uh, you push that region onto the graph. Um, and you can do that with a homotopy. Uh, so there's a retraction and that map is homotopic to the identity. So um, this is a, a way to make this precise uh, is using the notion of the mapping cylinder. Um, and this makes sense and is a useful way of constructing um, deformation retractions uh, in other settings. So, uh, what's the mapping cylinder? So we have map uh, from some space Z to a space Y, and then we're going to construct a quotient space, um, the mapping cylinder, M cylinder, M sub F. So the mapping cylinder of uh, F, I take uh, Z cross the interval, disjoint union with Y, and I think about gluing Z cross the interval to Y uh, along the top using the map F. So more precisely, let's uh, let me draw a picture. So here's a, an example. Um, Z is the circle on the left, Y is some space, and I have a map from the circle into the space Y. And what I want to do is, is I want to, uh, I want to glue uh, the circle cross an interval onto the space Y um, using the map F at the, the, the level one. Okay, so um, now there's a retraction from the mapping cylinder onto Y. Uh, which you get just by um, taking the, the cylinder and just projecting the cylinder onto the, the, the end of the cylinder at height one. Okay, and um, so that's what I've uh, indicated down here with these formulas. So that map is a retraction of the mapping cylinder onto Y. Um, so I think about Y as a subspace of the mapping cylinder. And uh, in fact, it's a deformation retraction. So you can just use the cylinder to, um, to push that, uh, the, the identity on the mapping cylinder down to this retraction. So throughout that push, you are um, the identity on the subspace Y. And maybe there's the formula, uh, hope that's right. Effectively, what you're doing is doing a kind of straight line homotopy inside of the cylinder. Okay, so um, uh, that is uh, some examples, some definitions, um, this notion of deforming maps. And um, uh, uh, when we get to the, uh, this algebraic invariant, the fundamental group, um, this notion of homotopy is going to be important. And we'll see that spaces that are homotopy equivalent have, uh, have isomorphic um, fundamental groups. Okay, so before uh, we, we, uh, we end, uh, I want to just say um, uh, one more thing, which is um, to introduce this idea of a CW complex, and we'll do that from the perspective of uh, surfaces. So uh, we constructed all of our surfaces by taking a disk, uh, we have some side pairings, and then we um, build the, the surface as a quotient space from the side pairings. So there's the example, um, A, B, C, A bar, B bar, C bar. Uh, on the left, there's our disc and our side pairing. And if you do that gluing, what you get is a torus. And the boundary of the disc, the circle, maps onto this uh, graph on the, uh, on the surface. So another way to think about building the surface kind of inductively um, up from uh, like points to edges to, uh, or points from points to, um, something one-dimensional to something two-dimensional. Uh, we start with the finite set of points and we take one point for each equivalence class uh, vertices in our, 
um, polygon. So in our picture on the left, the side pairing gives us two equivalence classes of vertices, and that becomes two points inside of the, the surface. Then uh, for each of our arcs, um, or each pair of arcs that get identified, uh, we, we're going to glue an interval um, at its endpoints to uh, the points in this finite set. So in our example, we had two points. Uh, we have uh, three equivalence classes of arcs. Each one of those equivalence classes, we're going to think about gluing a compact interval along its endpoints to one of the two points. And then what's left uh, when we do that, and what we've uh, constructed is a graph. So a graph is just something where you take a collection of uh, discrete set of points, and then you glue in a bunch of compact arcs along their endpoints to that discrete set. OK, so uh, after that, all that's left to build the surface is to glue in the disk. And so what we do is we glue the disk, identifying arcs in the boundary of the disk with edges in the graph. So uh, we want to extract this idea uh, of, of building a surface in this way, kind of inductively, by, by gluing uh, very simple things um, together, attaching uh, simple things to, uh, to build something complicated. Uh, and we do this inductively by dimension. So we started with something zero dimensional, then we attach things that are one dimensional, and then we attach things that are two dimensional. So uh, this, is, this gives rise to the idea of a cell complex or something called the CW complex. So it's a topological space X that's built as follows. Uh, so we start with uh, X zero, um, it's gonna be called the zero skeleton. And that's just a discrete set of points. Could be finite, could be countable, could be uncountable. Um, so uh, those points are called the vertices or sometimes the zero cells. So that's the starting point, X zero. Um, and then what are we going to do? We're going to we're going to build uh, inductively um, by attaching uh, um, higher and higher dimensional disks to um, to the previous uh, um, step in the construction. So we start with x zero, um, and then we're going to build x one from that, and then x two, and x three, and so on. So for any n bigger than or equal to one, we're going to construct the n skeleton. That's x n of this space x inductively from the n minus one skeleton by attaching n cells via maps, uh, which are maps from the boundary of the disk to, um, to the n minus one skeleton. Okay, so the n cells are, are gonna be denoted by these E alpha n's. So we need some maps. Uh, so these maps are um, indexed by some index alpha. They're maps from the n minus one sphere, which I view as the boundary of an n disk. Um, uh, into the n minus one skeleton. And then what is the space Xn? So I take the disjoint union of the n minus one skeleton together with disjoint union of, of those n dimensional disks. Uh, and then I'm going to identify points in the boundary of the disk uh, with their image in the n minus one skeleton via the maps phi alpha. So these, these gluing maps or these attaching maps. Okay, so um, if you think about in the, the surface example, we started with our discrete set of points. Those were the images of the equivalence classes of vertices. Um, and then we have our one dimensional uh, disks. Those are um, compact intervals. And we have maps of the boundaries of those one dimensional disks, which are just the endpoints. We have maps of the endpoints to the vertices. Um, and then we glue each of those intervals, those one dimensional disks to the set of vertices to build the one skeleton. Okay, and then we have a map of the boundary of a two dimensional disk into that one skeleton the graph. And then we attach the disk to that graph um, to construct the surface. So that's a situation where um, we stopped after, uh, after two steps uh, and, but we could continue. Um, I guess I was supposed to say a little bit more about the notation. This, these N cells, these E alpha Ns, they're just the image under the quotient map um, from this disjoint union to, uh, to the space uh, Xn. So they're the images of um, the interiors of the disk. Okay, so in this way, um, each, you can think about the, the space X as being the disjoint union of the interiors of the cells. Right, so um, this is, uh, I need to sort of say how this, 
how this um, construction sort of finishes either for some n you just stop and you say all right x is the space xn um, so in the example of surfaces x is the space uh, x2 it's equal to the two skeleton we didn't add any we didn't attach any three dimensional cells or four dimensional cells or so on um, but we could continue to attach cells um, so we could take x to be the union Right. So notice that Xn sits inside of Xn plus one, sits inside of Xn plus two, so on. So we have this nested union, um, uh, which is X, uh, and we could, um, we could take cells in, in every dimension. And then X is the increasing union of uh, the N skeleton. Well, we need to say how it's topologized and it's topologized with what's called the weak topology where a set is open if and only if its intersection with every uh, end skeleton is open. Um, or you could say closed if the intersection with every uh, end skeleton is closed. Okay, so um, that's the, 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 um, the construction or definition of a cell complex. You can read more about these in Hatcher. In the appendix, there's a bunch of sort of point set topology about cell complexes that's useful to, to kind of go through. Um, and I suggest that you take a look at those. Uh, the reason for maybe introducing these uh, is that um, these spaces come up quite often. So um, quite often manifolds are also cell complexes. It's not just for surfaces. Um, so quite often manifolds are cell complexes. And when you have uh, your, your space um, expressed as a cell complex, you can often do calculations of the various algebraic invariants, for example, the fundamental group, um, uh, much more easily. Um, and everything can be described in terms of the attaching maps. So um, that's one of the reasons for introducing them and the fact that they sort of come up quite often. Okay, uh, that's it. Next time in class, we will um, pick up from there, uh, talk about some examples and other constructions.